we'll only give him the top feed. So I was like, I'm, I was very firm with the doctor. I will give my feed. So whatever comes, you tell me what to do. I'll take a room over here. So they're like, we're completely full. We don't have a room over here as well for you. So you'll have to go home. And my home is just like five minutes to the hospital. So I was like, no, mind. I'll send in my feed every 10 to 15 minutes. You give my feed. He should have my breastfeed because I was so sure that his immunity will build up only if he gets my milk. So, and my husband's like, you go home, I'll be here the whole night. I was like, okay, fine. But every 10 minutes, uh, my husband used to come home. I used to give him the feed. And uh, at that moment of time, I didn't have a breast pump. So I ordered a breast pump. It was a manual one, which I got. But I couldn't, you know, use it because my brain was not working. I don't know what was happening to me. And I was like, okay, I have to express it now, hand express. So the whole night, I have hand expressed the milk just every 20 minutes. Okay, from here, then from here. I I don't know if you guys get it, like how do you, and the pain, that pain was, it was like, I was not even thinking about the pain. All I could think about was my baby, what is going to happen to him. And uh, the doctor actually mentioned about the blood transfusion only to me and my husband, no one else. So we were the only ones who knew about this. So because my mom and everyone would get hyper and they would, you know, be worried. So the whole night I couldn't sleep. That was the worst moment and toughest moment I think I have felt as a mom. And the morning my husband called me that the count has dropped to 25, so you don't need to worry. More three, four nights. But all four nights I had taken this thing that I'm going to give him breast milk only, whatever comes. But I would actually, you know, push all the moms to do the same because I think only because of my milk has this immunity gone up and he came back home within five days, I guess. Yes. So. It was really bad for me. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you yes. so much for sharing that. Okay, let's put our hands together for Nisha Rawal. So Nisha has been a part of the industry, the film and television industry for 21 years. She has acted in soap operas, movies, reality shows, and all of it. Uh, she is a mother and now a fabulous content creator as well. So thank you, Nisha, for being here. Uh, I'm just gonna continue where we stopped before Nisha came in. Uh, you know, oh, I feel like going back to what Dia said about gratitude, you know, it's easy to say gratitude is, you know, the best attitude, which of course it is. But it's this and its community that actually makes you remember what gratitude means because it's so easy to become a victim and think of your problems being the biggest, right? I know I do, I have, I'm sure everyone has at some point. But when you start hearing other people's obstacles and, and things that other people have gone through, suddenly you're like, why was I even complaining? Like, what was I even thinking, you know? And it just reminds you that much more to have gratitude. I mean, yes, my child was pulled out and he was in NICU, but he was in NICU for 24 hours. And I thought it was a nightmare. And then I hear stories like this and suddenly I'm like, you know what? I had it so much easier, thank you. So yeah, that, I mean, really honestly, it's been a great sharing circle so far. Uh, Barkha, you take over. Uh, welcome, Nisha. I would like to ask you one question. So uh, would you like to tell us all uh, about how is it being a mom in the media industry? Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, firstly, apologies for the delay. I think I've officially taken off this whole thing that I used to have this air about that I'm always on time. So <laughs> a big apology for that. And thank you for waiting. So about the question on how I feel as a mom from the media industry, I believe that um, you know, I've gone through a lot of uh, transition periods in my life, like I'm sure most of us have. And uh, right from the time where, you know, there was only conventional advertising to now we've moved to the whole digital world and thanks to that, that we are here today. I feel that being a mom in the media industry is definitely not easy because you're judged for, you know, tying your hair in a messy ponytail or, 
you're required to always be this perfect person like they see you on screen. They think that that's how you need to be off screen too. And I believe that just puts an added pressure. I'm sure as moms, we are all struggling every day, being as if being a mom just was not hard enough. <laughs> So I believe that is just an added pressure. But uh, thanks to the changing times that I said that I belong to a world where I have seen it all, where I come from the time where people have shamed me for many things. And here I am today where we are just a bunch of this strong community where we kind of, you know, root for each other. So it feels good. And, you know, gratitude, like uh, she was talking about that Simone said, I believe that that is all I have in my heart right now. Thanks, Nisha. Uh, I'll move to Dia. Uh, how did you navigate change in your life? When you become a mom, your body changes, and there are other changes as well. How was your experience? Honestly, Varkha, I didn't really get the opportunity to think about too much, only the fact that because of the background that I've already shared with you, there was just this urgent medical condition that we were all dealing with. So um, I, I'm really grateful that I didn't go through any kind of um, postpartum uh, or any such. I had the wonderful care. My gynecologist is just the angel that I think we all need. He was excellent with handling me, especially given the circumstances. And... Um, and the support of my family, my husband, my mother was just extraordinary. So I can't really think back to anything that I had to struggle with apart from just coping with understanding how I was going to be okay with being away from my child um, at such an early phase of his life and how, you know, uh, this wonderful mother shared about how she believes that her breast milk really was the best medicine for her baby. And in my case, I wasn't able to lactate at all. And I think that was one of the most crushing things I had to deal with so early in my, you know, uh, in my child's life that because he was born so prematurely and he was away from me and we didn't get the chance to even have skin to skin, my body just didn't produce the hormones it needed to. Um, so there was a lot of all of that that I had to deal with. But having said that, a lot of people say this to me, you know, you don't look like you've just had a baby uh, or you don't look like you've become a mother. And I'm like, I don't know whether that's a compliment <laughs> uh, because I'm pretty certain that if my child had reached full term, my body would have changed a lot more than it did. And it's oftentimes, of course, given paid as a compliment but in my mind, it figures as a reminder for something I was unable to do. And which is why I always tell mothers and, of course, everyone else that we, we really need to stop um, stereotyping what a woman should look like when she has a child. And, and this is a conversation we really need to have a lot more of. Like, Simone, you're gorgeous. <laughs> uh, damn, you're hot. And I'm sure everybody says this to you too, right? Yep. And I'm sure you have your own set of struggles. 100%, I've done posts on this also. Exactly. I'll send so, it to you. Yeah. yeah, I remember reading one of them. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I think this is something that we really need to change. But I have to admit that I am so, I read so much about postpartum because I think it's something that every woman must equip herself uh, with the knowledge of. And especially make sure your family understands what postpartum is. I made sure my husband, my mother, everybody read up everything there was on it. And thankfully I was, you know, spared. But it can be horrifying for those who are actually dealing with it. Yeah, I think that brings me Perfect segue. Um, you know, it feels, so I've had my son 10 years ago, right? So the story will feel dated, but in my heart, it almost feels like I have to keep away from it intentionally. And um, 
So the struggle is real, right? Um, whilst you might have read up everything there is on postpartum depression and the blues and the moods, and while I had a wonderfully supportive husband, family, all of it, um, I was hit and I was hit really, really badly. And I think there were multiple reasons why that happened, but it also took very, very long to find my way back into the world. So, um, and, and I'm gonna try and keep it as crisp, uh, but the reason I want to share it is because sometimes you have to hasten the process. And, and that's what I want to kind of um, share with you all. So I used to be a private banker with Morgan Stanley uh, prior to having my firstborn. And I was raised by a stay-at-home mother uh, who raised us beautifully, three children, uh, all of us type A, achievers, well-rounded, all of that. And the most natural thing for me to feel as a mother was that attachment to your child and wanting to give the best. Uh, and also the chatter in your brain saying, you know, if I take a break, I will perhaps be the best mom that I can possibly be. Um, without actually delving deeper into understanding where is it that me as a woman derives my sense of self-worth from. Um, so the most natural thing for any parent to do is to, you know, or, or a mother to do who doesn't perhaps have to work um, to, to get the bread on the table is to say, I'm going to take a sabbatical. Um, and, and that's what I did. And while uh, it's very natural to feel that attachment with your child, I'm not sure it was the right decision for me. Uh, and that kind of went into this long tunnel of lack of self-worth, uh, you know, identity crisis, and so much more. And, and, and I think a lot of it had to be fueled by the blues that I was already feeling on account of my hormones, the weight gain, and just everything came crashing down on me. Um, by the time I reached out for professional help, uh, it almost was two years, and it was rather late, right? Um, and, and, and asking so many questions, going through so much counseling to really find out what is the root that will take me back to life. My route was work. And so my struggles of postpartum led me to becoming an entrepreneur. Um, so I actually- And a fabulous one at it. Oh, <laughs> thank you. It's, 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 it's been a while, but so I literally went back into the workforce with, with a very small amount of money in an attempt to find my way back into the world. And I think ever since I went in, it's not been easy, but I've never been back there. Uh, and, and so all I'd urge you as new moms or moms who is going through the blues, right? And, and I'm sure each one has dark days, struggles, all of that, is to really go back and ask yourself, what is it that, what is that one or two things as a woman that makes you feel fulfilled apart from your child, your husband, it could be anything, right? For me, work was my way back into the world. For somebody else, it could be something else. And I think as long as you keep at that, perhaps you will make a happy mother and a happy family. So, yeah. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Talking about postpartum, you know, uh, I'm so glad that now people are doing it openly because, you know, mental health and all the taboos around speaking about how you feel and all of that. Um, me, for one, um, you know, I literally, like my son, it's my son's birthday in two days. And every time his birthday comes, I'm filled with joy. But it also reminds me of, you know, one of the saddest moments of my life. And to me, my dog was my first child. And um, the on, you know, the only reason I pushed my doctor that hard for a natural delivery, even though things were against those circumstances, was because I was like, I have to go home. I cannot wait in the hospital one more day. My dog is sick. He needs me. That's my baby. I didn't care about, I truly did not care about what was coming out. All I wanted to go back to was that guy at home. And um, I finally got home with my baby from the hospital two days uh, after he was born. And 24 after, hours after that, my dog passed away. And it was, you know, one of the hardest days. And then connecting with my child while I'm grieving massively, attempting to breastfeed and like my mother with all that pressure and there was so much pressure you know do this do that do this but I just wanted to run away I just wanted to cry scream and you know deal with all of that um, but yes it is work uh, it is my husband my every everything around me but honestly it was work that got me back into my senses and um, that is exactly what led to me starting to blog on Instagram 
and here I am today. That is like literally how the Instagram journey began. So yeah, it's, it's all of these things just come up in November, but we're all here stronger. Um, you know, I'm proud of myself. I know everyone sitting here is proud of themselves too. And I know that one day our kids are going to be super duper proud of us. Uh, Nisha, now since you're here, tell us, what was your, what has been your hardest moment as a mother? Well, uh, everybody's speaking so beautifully here and I am humbled to be a part of this evening because it's just so endearing as well as inspiring at the same time to watch every mom out here just casually share. It's just like two friends sitting at a coffee shop and just sharing, you know, that's the best part I like about this evening. So, um, well, I don't even know which part because I've been a mother for five years now and Kavisha has just turned five and before that, I think the hardest part of being a mother is when you carry a child and then you just feel that, feel the entire excitement of being a mom and then one day you don't become one. Like I lost a child uh, before Kavish when uh, I was five months pregnant. And I think that was the hardest part because you know, the, there are still those hormones in your body. Uh, they're telling you that, oh, you're still a mother. And then, you know, your breasts are full, your tummy hurts, and you know, all of those signs that I've even forgotten the signs because it's been so long. But all that soreness in your body and all your shopping lists and the apps you've subscribed to, and they're telling you, okay, now your baby is the size of a watermelon and a pumpkin. And then one day you're just not pregnant. And then that's tough, you know, it takes over your life and your mental health goes for a toss and then you reach out and then you form your own community and you're there for each other. So I feel the hardest of our moments are the moments that make us the strongest. And that's the hard moment that made me strong because after that I took my own time to come out. It took me seven years to get over or come to terms with the fact that, okay, my baby is now an angel. And that's when I announced this support group for women on my Motherhood Chronicles page, which is called Goodbye Angel. That's what I used to call my baby. And that's for all the mothers who can come together and, you know, whether born or unborn, whatever, whichever child they've lost, it's for them. And, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I can sure be a friend. So over a DM, I kind of talk to moms and give them strength. I talk about my journey, put them onto my therapist. And those are the little things we can do for each other. So I think the hardest part of being a mom is when one day you wake up and you realize you're not. Yeah, so. Thank you uh, so much, Nisha, for sharing that so candidly with us. And that actually takes me to our next question. Uh, Naya, would you like to tell us all, how is it being a mom entrepreneur? Momprena. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I get asked this a lot. I mean, I, I, I get asked about this whole woman entrepreneur thing on panels. And, you know, the reality of the situation is there are what? Maybe of the hundred and whatever number of unicorns we have in India, there are probably only five or six that have uh, women founders, co-founders on those unicorns, right? And it's extremely sad that that's the case. Um, and I think the second part to it, of course, is that very few moms. So I kind of know, like, I can count on one hand, like, the moms who I know to be moms who are co-founders of unicorns, right? And it's, it's so rare, almost like a species, right? So I'll tell you, you know, not, not the worst part, but I think a really tough part, you know, people think that, oh, you know, I, you know, my background is I used to work at McKinsey. I've studied at Harvard Business School. I have, like, I've had a lot of privilege in my life, right? A lot of luck, a lot of privilege. But building business, I think it's a very equal playing field. And I remember when I was pregnant, um, I came out of the bathroom, you know, after you like kind of figure you're pregnant, right, in the stick. And I was like, Sandeep, my husband, I told him, I'm like, we're pregnant. And he was like, yeah, we're pregnant. And I was like, oh my God, what am I going to tell my team? What am I, oh. That was the first thing that came to mind. What am I going to tell my investors? And you know, it was, it, and he was like, are you crazy? <laughs> you know? But you know, you just put so much of yourself into building that that is who you become. Um, and I remember also just very quickly, uh, I mean, of course it's very joyful. For me, it's like, I fortunately had a very joyful parenting experience overall and that's why I'm really like, just very inspired by the stories I hear. But I remember, um, you know, when Arya was born um, and I was, we, I delivered at Breach Candy 
and I came out of the room, like out of the um, theater after my C-sec, and I immediately took my phone when I was in a position to, and I was checking my work emails because I was doing a fundraise at that point in time. And we had literally three months of cash flow left in the business. <laughs> and I was looking for my term sheet negotiation, and I just saw an email from a very key team member saying that, listen, I have to resign. And I was like, is that going to completely destroy my fundraise? <laughs> and literally, my family's like, are you crazy? What are you thinking of, you know? But anyway, to cut a long story short, I just want to share that, you know, I, I do want to acknowledge how much I love being a mom, but I also do want to acknowledge that I love being an entrepreneur. I love building. I love creating. I know all, when I look around us, I see so much passion, so much inspiration, so much drive in the women I meet every day. And I think the only thing I'd say is that don't lose yourself either way, right? <laughs> Try and find that mythical balance and walk that tightrope and just know that we're all in this together. Um, so yeah, that's it. <laughs> So I work with Naya like on a daily basis, right? <laughs> Hourly basis, yes. And let me tell you, she's the best mentor to have. Like the way she supported me. Like I had a sabbatical of three years, four years before I started working again. And the way she supported me. And that's the reason I'm here in front of all of you. And I'm able to talk here. So a big Amazing. round of applause for Naya. Uh, Dia, I would like to ask you a question. Personally, your life has evolved from being Femina Miss India to a lead actress and now an environmentalist, along with being an amazing, amazing mom. Did you change as a person or the decisions you make are different from what was earlier? Um, no, Barkha. I mean, I think what happened after I became a mother was that I be just became even more uh, fiercely passionate about what I was doing because I think I mean I'm really grateful that I found I find myself in a place in life where everything that I do is aligned with my purpose and uh, whether it is creating content or it's telling a story or it's being at a talk or whatever it is it's all aligned with what I really really care about um, and I think what Avyan's birth has done for me is just made me that much more determined to see us through this time. I'm going to share something really important with all the mothers here. You know, unfortunately, environmental action and climate change does not feature as a mainstream conversation. And it's not everybody's priority as it should be. Because, and, and, and I want to address this off mothers because um, I have, there are these group of mothers at COP27 right now, they call themselves warrior moms and they're fighting for air quality in Egypt. And unfortunately what has happened is that we've created a society that is hyper consumerist and we've created a world that is just driven by that hyper consumerism that we pay very little attention to those things that truly bring balance and health into our lives. Yes, the yoga is important. Yes, the nutrition is important. Yes, it's important to have goals and aspirations in life. But at the end of the day, the one thing and the only 